Okay, we're going to look at a cloning vector and the requirements that it needs um, in order for it to be used as a stable replicating DNA molecule that we can add some foreign DNA to it. So I'm going to use the example of a plasmid. And uh, so I already did a video on, on cloning vectors and how we can use this technology. So just a quick recap is basically we can input our own DNA or some other type of DNA into a little bacteria or a plasmid, which is a cloning vector, which gets taken up by a bacteria and then the bacteria replicates that DNA for us. So there are various procedures that you need to do and measures that you need to take in order to make sure there's no contamination and you're getting the right DNA and that the plasmids actually took up the DNA, but that's for another video. So today I'm just gonna do the requirements that a vector needs in order for it to be used as a vector. So first, a cloning vector must contain an origin of replication. Um, so this origin of replication, let's just draw it right here. So let's pretend that this right here is the origin of replication. So that's the origin of replication. Uh, it needs to be recognized by the host cell so that it can be replicated along with the DNA that it carries. So this needs to be recognized by the bacteria that takes it up in order for it to be replicated and in order for our injected, let's just pretend that right here we have our injected, this is the DNA that we put into this plasmid that we want it to be replicated, right? So this little sequence here, some sequence that we want to amplify in order to study it. Um, the second thing that it should have is it should carry selectable markers. So a marker is just a trait that basically enables the cells containing the vector to be selected or identified. So a marker might be something like this sequence right here that is penicillin resistant or streptomycin resistant. So an antibiotic resistant section that when we put uh, this this bacteria in a bath containing whatever antibiotic we're using, this will survive. So we want this section here to be able to be selected and we need to make sure that it is it is used uh, to our advantage and that we know whether the plasmid has been, uh, or our DNA here has been taken into the plasmid. Third, the cloning vector needs to have a single cleavage site for each of one or more restriction enzymes that are used. So let's just draw a few here. Let's pretend that we have some common restriction sites like uh, BAM, H1, uh, ECO, RI, we'll do it another color, do blue. And HIND3 is another one, do that down here. So you need those in order for us to be able to cut the DNA. So let's actually, let's pretend that we have two HIND3 sites, uh, one right here as well. So now we know, and depending on the, uh, how, the rate of digestion and how quickly these uh, restriction endonucleases cut and how long we expose the bacteria to these um, restriction enzymes will depend on what the, the fragments that we actually get cut and then where the, the, uh, the protein sequence of DNA, sorry, not protein, that we put into the plasmid gets put in. So yeah, you need these, uh, these uh, restriction enzymes in order to be able to identify, um, identify where the protein that, or the DNA that you have injected is. So we'll just write right here, um, put gene of interest. So those are the three basic requirements. So you need an origin replication, you need a selectable marker. So actually I'm gonna write there, antibiotic resistant. And then you need a unique uh, single cleavage sites for one or more restriction enzymes that are used.